bit of a production uh, faux pas. Uh, it, it wouldn't uh, broadcast for whatever reason. So we're back. We're going to cut to the chase because we're later than we thought. But just to recap, we're not going to talk NFL tonight. We're not going to talk football tonight. We're having a special, you know, not not uh, walking into this, the job that Serge, the hockey guru, does. The best that there is. Nobody better in hockey. Really, truth, truthfully, nobody is better because... He's got this wonderful mix of educated analysis and fan. And that's a real hard thing to pull off. There's a guy in New York, Christopher Russo, big Giants fan, San Francisco Giant fan. He can do it. He can pull it off. Where you can be a fan, but be objective and know what's going on. And, and as we know, for, especially from his early season success, the man can work the spread like nobody's business. Now, you know, I don't do the spread. It's not my thing. Um, not good at it. I like to analyze the things from a coach's perspective and a player's perspective. So, went uh, four for four two weeks ago in the NFL. This week, I went three for four. Not too bad. I'll take it. And the one game that I lost was one that I was hedging, and that was with the Colts. I thought the weather would be worse than it was, thinking it would neutralize some of the things that the Chiefs were able to do, and that simply was not the case. Well... Anyway, if you saw the title of the uh, video that I was trying to run that uh, wouldn't actually work, it was an update on the WSHL uh, and our request for an interview and uh, what's going on with that. And um, it, well, what, what can I tell you? You know, it was amazing how fans, and people are allowed their opinion, right? So, so basically what we brought up and, and, we, and we at FHT, the whole group, the whole team, uh, we, we all kind of researched this thing, and I spoke about it. It's just very odd that, that uh, Ron White, you know, and again, no accusations at all. No accusations at all. Let me slow this down. No accusations at all. But that a person can actually run a hockey league, but yet be the owner of one of the teams in that league. Now, you may say, well, Darren, that happened in the L... And, and, and I know you're thinking about this, right? You said, Darren, I'm thinking AFL. I'm thinking, you know, Lamar Hunt with the Chiefs. Remember, the Chiefs did not start in Kansas City, did they? You remember where they started? Houston. That's right, the Houston Texans for one year. Then the Dallas Cowboys were brought into the NFL to compete with them, and they decided to move to Kansas City. Oh, did not know that, Yes. Like most people don't realize that the Chargers did not start in San Diego. They actually went back home to L.A. That's where they started. Anyway, so we were wondering about, you know, we called it nepotism much. And that was just kind of like a ha-ha laugh kind of thing. And it was amazing. I don't mind people being negative uh, and, uh, you know, ranting. And that's what it's about, right? Because as iron sharpens iron, we are um, very much into people expressing their opinion. So at first I had some somebody just flaming me. They're like, "Oh, you should be sued for libel and slander." Well, pick it up. Is it one or the other? One is written, one is spoken. Okay, but and I know you're probably mixed up. Maybe I'm not saying you are, because it is a new media. Uh, but you also need to understand what the rules are when it comes to a couple things. One, nobody was slandered, nobody was libel. We just simply asked a question. Plus, when you're a public figure, you may know this, but the stakes are higher. When you are an owner of a team, much less the, the person running a league, you are a public figure. And again, nobody accused anybody of anybody. They're just questions. So, so when you own a team, and when you run a league, Long Beach, and, uh, WSHL, and you own a team, the Long Beach Bombers, and there are these analytical, uh, these, these antidotal stories about Three refs, then four refs, and then back to three refs. They're trying to get a call in their home barn, and, and, and referees talking offline about certain things. And, and, and who knows if they're true or not? So what we wanted to do, if you remember, and it's on tape, so watch it. We wanted to say, hey, let, let's talk to Ron White. Let's talk to Ron White. Or a spokesperson from WISHL. Is, 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 is this uh, something that uh, maybe you can answer some questions? Like, is it weird 
that uh, you own a team. Or you can say no, you can tell us to go pound sand, that's fine. Or have there been complaints? How do you address those complaints? Do you ignore them? So, Serge Bogosian, the hockey guru, took it upon himself to write a very professional letter from FHT Sports. It sounds like inside baseball. You know what? I need my, I need my readers. Right, now I look like that old coach from the Chicago Bears again. It does sound like inside baseball. Absolutely. But nobody's saying that's what it is. because So, here's the thing. When there are questions, answer the question. Put out a press release. Give us a subordinate. Or you can ignore us and let the questions fester. So what happened is you had a, we immediately got blazed. FHT got blazed. People throwing all sorts of rancor at us and this and that. And, and, and that's okay. That's part of the game, right? We know that. Um, but again, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. And what do the facts tell us? That Ron White owns the Long Beach Bombers, and he is the president of the league. So, uh, hey, you know what? Maybe, like, maybe we can just ask the, 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 the head coach of the Long Beach Bombers. You know, maybe he should be, you know, like, I don't know, like, like just, you know, impartial. Sure, his boss is, you know, is the, also the, the president of the... Ooh, wait, that's the son. That's the son of the owner of the team and also the guy who is the running the league. All right, great, great. You know, that, that's good. Uh, you know, and that's great. And don't get me wrong. Again, I am not implying this is not backdoor. You might, if that's what you come to, that's your own conclusion. That's your own conclusion because I'm, I, I've never met the man. I would love to have interviewed him. Serge would have loved to interview him. Uncle Tony would have loved to interview him. We can get somebody else to, to get into just a couple questions. And not accusatory. Not accusatory. So, what does it have to do with anything else? Well, um, well, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Like, like, you know, you don't want to think it's daddy ball, but who knows? You know, and those of you who don't know what daddy ball is, it's a little league term. You want to know who's batting third, fourth, and fifth in baseball? See who the coaches are. They're kids. So, you know, like, there's a lot of people, I'm sure, that, that oh, and again, it's, 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 a, it's a private business. You know, like, whatever, and that's fine. You don't need to answer any questions, but people want to know. That for, for a long time now, in the WSHL, there are these questions about ticky-tack things and, and trades that are allowed and not allowed. And, you know, and, and when I say, you know, excuse me for saying that. Uh, things that uh, are allowed to go through and some places not allowed to go through. Why? How come? So there are these questions. Now, you may feel that you don't need to answer these questions, but then the questions exist. You can have people throw a tantrum and talk about libel and slander and use those kind of words. And again, that's fine. That's called freedom of speech. I'm a big believer in freedom of speech. Even though you use your freedom of speech to try to suppress others. But if you truly believe in freedom of speech, that's okay too. And again, here are my rules. You're entitled to your own you know, opinion, but not your own facts. So what does that have to do with the game tomorrow night? Truthfully, nothing. Nothing. First and launchers, Kill Kaminsky's team finds themselves in second place to Chris White's first place team. Now, the big difference is, as, as Uncle Serge reminded me yesterday, two days ago, there's like a six-game differential. Correct. Exactly right. We talked about that a little early, about there's no lying or no slander. Um, and by the way, even if, if the person is wrong and they truly believe that they were right and they were not looking to harm anybody, but I won't even get into the details. So, you're right. So it, the real difference is the amount of games that the Monsters have already played. So Long Beach has like five or six games in hand. They're sitting in first place. They're sitting in first place. Fresno's in second place. So for Fresno to have any sort of shot at first place, they need to win tomorrow night. But the truth is, and they're going to go for it. And we'll talk about that you know, uh, even uh, at, at a deeper level. 
And look, am I a Fresno Monster fan? Sure, I'm going to pretend I'm not, but I'm also objective. And we'll look at this thing for what it is. But um, chances are pretty good. Long Beach will, will finish the regular season on top. Fresno, second place. Play those playoff games in Gateway. Speaking of that, tomorrow night will be the last night that you can go to Selen Arena this season and see two Fresno Monsters play one Long Beach Bombers. Remember, it was right around this time last year that the Long Beach Bombers got swept in that building. And uh, so let's see what happens tomorrow night. It should be interesting. Uh, expect uh, everybody to be very loud and uh, you know, a little honorary, but respectful. And what I mean by respectful is no violence and uh, you know, showing some class and dignity, uh, but rooting on the Fresno Monsters, right? I mean, uh, the talent dis uh, disparity, uh, disparity between the two teams is, is not that much. It's not a big gap of talent. It's real, you know, which way is the puck going? You know, who, who's got the hotter goaltender, right? Who's going to be in who's going to be goal tomorrow night? Who do you think? Who would you put in? Let me know. You know, who, do do we come on top? Does does Killer play defensive game? Does he try to come out early? Does he set the tone? We don't know. We're going to find out. Now, here's the important thing about this game. And excuse me, I want to just see this. Is this pertinent to what we're, what we're discussing? No. So, here's the important thing. Truthfully, all this is is a tone game. So, for example, Long Beach wants to send a message. And they want to probably come in and not, not get injured, of course. And they want to say, hey, we got thoroughly, disgustingly, woefully embarrassed last year in Salon Arena. We got trashed. We were up by two two goals. Um, yes, we're ready when he's ready. We're, we're ready when Mr. White's ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're here. We want to ask just regular questions that anybody else would ask. And again, if you want, we can send you the questions in advance and you can give us an answer by email. Just validate that it's actually you or your spokesperson filling out the questionnaire. So, what happened last year is Long Beach came in, the, it looked like it was too big of a crowd for them. Truthfully, I mean, they, they got swept, which was shocking to me. I didn't see them getting swept. I thought they might lose the series because it was a very big emotional series. But tomorrow night, Selen Arena, it's a Thursday night, typically not the biggest attendance. But what happens? It's the last time at Selen Arena this season you can see two play one. And you know that... Uh, if, if you play any sort of sport at a competitive level, you know Long Beach wants to send the message. They want, they want to say, look, we're the big boys in town. We're first place. Last year was an anomaly. We want to kick your ass this year. We want to kick your ass. What Fresno wants to do is obviously stay in contention for that first place top seed. But they also want to say, you know what? This is our turf. This is our ice. And you also want to set tendencies. You also want to set agendas. Do it legally within the rules. But sort of like look for places right now. You're sort of scouting, right? You're sort of scouting. I know, you know, I know people that um, that uh, who were coaching when I was coaching D1, Division One softball, Division Three football. You wouldn't do a lay down, but you would hold back on certain things. Sort of like you do in preseason when it was what we would call a setup game. A setup game. Sometimes you started your second goalie. Because think about this, if you started your second goalie and you won, you mentally you're in the head. You start your first string goalie and they crush you, well then that's in the back of his head. So you know you want your best for your best? Not always. Because remember, long term goals beat short term gains. What's more important than tomorrow night's game is winning the whole damn thing. Winning the whole damn thing. So what does that mean? That means you don't you don't play selfish hockey. You don't take stupid penalties. You don't take run at guys to get cheers. You play within the system. You play hard nose. Because you know what? There's a big difference between, between playing tough physical hockey and, and playing cheap hockey. And it's sort of like, I forget what Supreme Court Justice, uh, um, I don't know the answer to that. Oh, that's very funny. Um, you know, the, 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 you know the, and I forgot what I was just going to say. So we'll move on from that. But, um, you know, long-term goals beat short-term gains. You'd much rather win the whole thing. So, it's interesting. So, tomorrow night 
is a very, very uh, important game from logistics. Why are you setting things up? Like, for example, if, if I'm playing a person, I, I, I played offensive guard in college. And if I knew that I was playing a guy early in the season, and I knew he was a frightened soul, I let him know that I knew. And I didn't have to say anything. I just give him a look and know that you're a frightened soul. I own you. You might have your own skin and bones, but, but you, you belong to me. And then what's going to happen? One or two things are going to happen. He was either going to come balls to the wall against me, which is great because he's not getting to my quarterback. And the more he tries to engage with my body, I'm just going to twist him and my running back's going to shoot right by him. Or I'm going to pound him. I'm just going to, I'm just going to treat him like tater sap. Anyway, so the game tomorrow night at Selen Arena, 7.30, drop it a puck. Get over there. It's weekend eve, folks. You know, you cheer on your team and see what happens. And again, whatever happens... It only means something if you allow it to. But the coaches, and look, Chris White's a good coach. He's a good coach. Killer's a great coach. In all my years of covering sports, been doing it with FHT for the last two years, but even before that, when I lived in New York in scouting, the man, Fresno was blessed to have Killer Kaminsky here because the man can coach like no one's business. And, and you know what? He doesn't let the inmates run the asylum. And here's a sad thing. You shouldn't even have to bring that up. Shouldn't even have to bring that up. It should be like a regular thing. Should be a regular thing. You know, um, this team's ready. This team's going to have a good playoff push. A real good playoff push. Tomorrow night is not the end of the world. Tomorrow night is sort of a status game. I would be if, if it was me. I'd be sizing things up. Who you know? Who can we dominate? Who should we avoid? Maybe. I don't know what the betting line is. Uh, Serge, the hockey guru, would know what the betting line is. I don't know what the betting line is on the game tomorrow. One would think that the first place uh, Long Long Beach Bombers, with their five or six games in hand, would be favored. But I don't know. I don't know. You know now. We know what happened last year. Selling arena was too big for them, and they, they kind of overwhelmed them a little bit. Uh, they played a little anxious. I might start. I might start my my backup goalie tomorrow night. You know, I might I might switch up some lines a little bit. You know, maybe some shorter shifts, and then and then you know, kind of flip that goal some longer shifts, kind of just to just to play play a little bit off tempo. So that they have to start guessing. And when you start guessing and reacting instead of initiating, you lose. Because I tell you, when the monsters get on momentum get momentum going, they're tough to beat. The biggest problem with the monsters this year is way beyond the control of Kill Kaminsky, way beyond the control of the other team. That's when we take selfish penalties. And we don't finish plays. You ever watch that odd couple? Why you don't assume, right? A S S U M E. You don't assume because you make an ass out of you and me. So when you assume that it's going to be an icing, or you assume that the play is going to stop, play through the whistle, but do it legally. Keep those elbows down. And if you get egged on, if somebody's talking, you know, talking crap to you, just ignore them until it's time not to ignore them. And even if you're losing. You know, you don't. You, you know, you, you just make sure that again, long-term goals be short-term games. The pain in their eyes that when they have to shake your hand in the end of a series, at the end of playing them in, a, you know, in a playoff series, if they don't get eliminated before you do. Nothing sweeter than shaking their hands and looking in their eyes, but you can't look in their eyes because they're looking at your skates. Play within the system, killer has. And no matter who we throw out there tomorrow. Night, we should do well. And I do say we because, like, what did I tell you? Full transparency. For somebody to tell you, you said you. That shows you you're impartial. No, I'm a fan, but I'm also uh, impartial when it comes to my analysis. I said Chris, you know, Chris White's a great uh, coach. Didn't say he's not. That's right. Hit him hard and hit him early. Our coach, my old coach, Bruce Colosa, who's still at Brooklyn College, by the way, he had an old saying, hit him till they quit, then hit him for being a quitter. And that kind of sums it up, doesn't it? 
So what do you think is going to happen tomorrow night? Let us know. You know, I, 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 just, I also want to take one moment and talk about the Fresno Junior Monsters team, that uh, the Pee Wee Hockey team, which um, won the right to go to Canada, right outside Toronto this past weekend, for the very prestigious Silver Sticks tournament. Just the fact that Fresno earned that right was tremendous. And the, they played the first couple of games, and they got they got uh, seated in the tier two. And uh, listen, you think it's going to be a gun show? Yes, I think I think you're right. I think I think people will be taking runs at each other. But as you know, I mean, Uncle Tony, you know it. You can take runs at people, but do it the right time. Do it the right way. Do it the right way. You know, a run that you might take when it's seven one is a totally different thing than one that they want you to do when you're up three games to two. I mean, th three goals to two. But I think you're right. I think it will be a gun show. So people, you know, look, I, look, FHT, here's the thing, and Serge the Hockey Guru talks about this all the time. We are not paid by, we're not lackeys of the Fresno Monsters. We have no association with them at all. Not a bit. I mean, trust me, if, if we did... They might be marketing a little differently, and I don't say that blaming anybody, pointing any fingers. What we do is we cover sports, and we we burden ourselves on hockey. We love hockey. Back to the Peewees for a second. So they went to the Tier 2 Finals. They had a 2 nothing lead. It, it didn't go the way that they wanted to, but we're so proud of them. We're so proud that a, a team from Fresno... When you have all these other teams, San Jose and teams down in L.A. and Anaheim. And we have a team in Fresno. And these kids just keep kicking ass, taking names. Making it to the finals. Bringing home a nice finalist banner. So, yeah. This, and it's funny, as you know, it's not a weekend series. It's just one game. They only play one game. And that's tomorrow night. So... Anyway, so, you know, to the hat, to the Fresno Pee Wee Monsters, again, they, they, their tradition of winning continues. They won all their tournaments last year. They went to the NorCal Finals, lost in seven overtimes to an extremely talented San Jose Shark women, uh, girls team. Great players on that team. Those players, class, all the way those players. Then, then what happened? The San Jose girls went on the Silver Sticks and they won. And the Fresno Monsters went and won the state championship. They went to the one tournament this year in San Jose. They won. And they went to the final in the Silver Sticks in Toronto. A lot of good hockey here in Fresno. And the Fresno Monsters lead that way with Kill Kaminsky. Well, this is Darren Redman for Redman's Wrap Up. Well, what do you think? Let me know. Please, you know what to do. Share. Share. Subscribe. Share. Tell your friends. Let us know what you think. We'll be talking tomorrow night. I have a feeling it'll be Serge the Hockey Guru talking about this. Yes, go Junior Foppins. Big time. 100%. And um, there's a lot of stuff going on with FHT that we need to tell you about. Remember, also, these things. It's not a plug. It's actually a flash card. No, it's not a plug. But you want to know about the history of hockey in Fresno? Buy this movie. Buy the or sorry. <laughs> Buy this movie. This is the history of hockey in Fresno. Played to a sold out audience at the Maya Theater in Fresno. What's also here? It's the full ceremonies of the Fresno Hockey Hall of Fame. Some amazing speeches, some great stories, just everything that went on was terrific. And then our editor, excuse me, our director, Tony Duran. The man is amazing with the camera. He's amazing with, uh, he's amazing with uh, a video camera. Just like Serge the Hockey Guru is, is amazing on, on what he does, uh, you know, with, with knowing hockey and, and, and building FHT and the social media. And you see the great job that he's doing. Tony's an absolute genius. When it comes to being the director. He has about 10 minutes of some of the funniest stuff. That you'll ever hear. And, and all of this is yours for $30. $30. We, you know we had people. 
We had a ship some some hands from Minnesota today. We had people buying by the twos and the threes. We're gonna make some more production on this. We have t-shirts coming, sweatshirts. But here's the thing about this. Five dollars of every purchase goes directly to the Al Gala Foundation and then a donation to to the Boys and Girls Club of Fresno County. Because we want to give back to the youth and you know with, with the history of that. This is what Al Gala loved. The, the, this cause that, and we're part of that. So thank you very much for watching and, and you know share this video. Let me know what you think about that whole Ron White, Chris White. I'm the I'm the head of I'm the president of the league, but I'm also an owner, you know, as a and then and uh, you know my, my son is the coach. Is that okay? I I say it's okay. We answer some questions. I mean not that we're, you know but people have questions and that's what we do. And there should be nothing wrong with answering questions. But if you want to, you know, flame people, that's okay, too. You know, you, again, you're entitled to your own opinion, not your own facts. We just ask for questions. Nobody is accusing anybody of anything. Tomorrow's game, I think Uncle Tony has it right. It's going to be a gun show. You're going to see people taking runs at each other. I would use that to my advantage. I'd use it to my advantage. I do a little keto, which means use their momentum against them. And then sometimes punch them right in the face. I don't mean literally. You know what I mean. Absolutely go monsters. That's absolutely right, Reed. Absolutely right. Thank you for that. This is Jerry for Ravens Wrap Up. Brought to you by FHT Sports. We'll talk to you soon.